So this is HP Spectre, advertised as the newest, thinnest and the lightest notebook by HP. Starting at just around $1200, it's one of the most advertised laptops by HP. But smaller is not always better. Smaller laptops often come with compromises in battery, durability and performance. But HP says the Spectre is different, so let's find out. Starting with the unboxing, inside the box we have a soft leather case and another box with Spectre carved in gold or copper. On the side, we'll see the redesigned HP logo that goes with the look of this mint notebook. But on the bottom, we'll still see the traditional HP logo. Anyways, let's unwrap the plastic and see what we got inside. And opening the box, we are introduced with a 13-inch HP Spectre. It comes with a pull-out tab. Holding the laptop in hand, I can definitely notice how light this thing is. But anyways, let's put that to a side and see what else we got in the box. So inside the box, we have some instruction guide in French and English. And right underneath, some more paperwork. And I must say, they've put some thoughts into the packaging. It is very appealing, but for some reason, everything about their packaging reminds me of Apple. But anyways, we have a USB-C to HDMI cable. And here's a USB-C to regular USB adapter. And our power cord. And lastly, our power brick. Very small and lightweight. Has a pretty long wire. This power brick is smaller than what Apple offers, so it's easier to carry around. But anyways, let's put that to a side and check out the laptop. Alright guys, so this is the brand new HP Spectre. Look-wise, it looks really nice, only available in deep brown and golden or copper color with the new logo. And it is pretty light, but anyways, let's open it up by removing the plastic for which we'll have to turn the laptop upside down, so let's do that. And here is the lightest notebook yet. Holding it in hand, it feels premium. For a device as light as this, I'm surprised it didn't use plastic. It has a full aluminium body, which makes it durable and lightweight. And a very slim design has these rubber pads at the bottom, two air intakes at the bottom and this is where the hot air comes out and on the back is where we see all our ports. So this is the charging port and two USB-C's but you can use any one of them for charging and any one of them for USB ports and our headphone jack right here. On the left there's nothing, on the right there's nothing. So for any ports or any type of input you'll have to use the back. The screen is held by two hinges that are controlled by a piston. And when closing the hinges, it is completely flush and impossible to see. So great detailing on the design. The hinge is not as firm as what I'm used to. It has a little bit of play, but nothing too much, just a little bit. But anyways, using the laptop, it performs fairly well. The fans are very quiet. For most parts, you won't even know the fans are running. Doing some basic web browsing and watching videos at 1080p, the fans are constantly running. But as I said, they have no noise, so it shouldn't really bother you. Watching 4K content is the only time you'll feel the fans running. But speed-wise, this computer does an excellent job. It's running on Intel i7 6th gen. With 256 solid-state drive, it makes the boot time less than few seconds. Loading application is almost instantly. Doing some light editing or gaming should be fine with the 8GB of RAM. If you open the laptop, you can swipe the SSD to increase the storage, but the RAM is soldered, so you can't really do anything about that. It can be a great computer for any student. If you're looking for looks and performance in light and compact size, this could be a decent investment. HP claims 9 hours of battery life, which is pretty decent for a device as thin as this, but practically, I got about 5-6 to six hours of battery use, which is not bad either. On the outside, the notebook has a Gorilla Glass, so it's much durable and scratch resistant. The 13.3 inch display has a glossy finish and produces a great vibrant color. But it's not a touch screen. It has a 1920 by 1080p resolution. Overall, the screen is good. It's not very bright, but for general use, you should be fine. The keyboard is good looking, but the user experience is just okay. I didn't really like the feel of the keyboard while I was typing. And for some reason, it was pretty easy to mess up words. Using the trackpad is very frustrating. It is way too small and does not have a dedicated button for clicks. The trackpad wasn't so smooth, it would often miss some gestures and I didn't really like the overall experience of it. The speaker is okay, it gets the job done but there is no quality sound. It's not very loud and the output is very very flat. 
there is no base and I get it for a device as thin as this there's only so much you could fit but if you're spending more than $1200 on a notebook it should at least fulfill some basic expectations. Overall it's a great computer, it's light, it's thin and has amazing battery performance. But for some reason I still couldn't understand the exact target audience. I mean it's compact running on Intel i7 solid state drive for a device as thin as this. Doing any type of heavy tasks, it will start to heat up the computer and the cooling system does a decent job but that's only till a limit. For long term use, I don't really think the device will be able to hold on to its performance as well. But if you're looking for something that's portable, light, good looking and with great battery performance and you're just using it for basic web browsing, taking notes, this could be a pretty decent laptop for you. But if you're going to do heavy gaming or editing, this might not be the best choice for you. And yeah guys, let me know what you guys think about the HP Spectre, would you consider buying it, why and why not? If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe for more content and as always, thanks for watching.